I say, Holmes, I understand we want to get away from Moriarty, but ooh, ooh, isn't this going a bit far? One can't be too careful where that fiend Moriarty is concerned, Watson. But I must admit, traveling 47 million miles into outer space was a stroke of genius on my part. It, it guarantees our safety. Well, well, then I suppose all this oh, floating about business is worth it if it puts us one step ahead of Moriarty. <laughs> or, or should I say, one giant step for our kind? <laughs> Dunderhead can rent a spaceship, so can I. Holmes, uh, what's that blip in the video screen? Good heavens, Moriarty's followed us even into outer space. And he's quite close, only 27,000 miles away. What, what can we do? We're, we're helpless, Holmes. Oh, not quite. We have just enough fuel to multiply our distance from Moriarty by 10 squared. Aha! Uh -huh. So they think that by multiplying their distance by 10 squared, they can escape me? Well, they've reckoned without Moriarty's Intergalactic Guided Mutilator, or M-I-G-G-M for short. All I have to do is work out the new distance between me and Holmes and Watson, and then, bang, the world, or should I say the universe, will be rid of those meddling fools forever. <laughs> Oh, no, the Bounder's got his M-I-G-G-M on board. Even, even at this distance we're done for. Let, let's vaporize Holmes before we're mutilated. No, no need for that, old fellow. Moriarty's missile will overshoot the mark by millions of miles. Now, just watch. <laughs> How in heaven's name did you know that would happen? Well, you could say I put two and two together. Or rather, two and four together. What do you mean? Stay tuned, Watson. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Power of Algebra, Program 5. In the last program, we looked at the world of negative numbers, where everything's back to front. And the farther you move along the positive side of a number line, the larger you become. But the farther you move along the negative side, the smaller you get. With negative 2 being less than negative 1, and negative 3 less than negative 2. Astronauts often have to use this backwards world of negative numbers. They even count backwards to launch the rockets. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, liftoff. Which means negative 5 seconds to liftoff, negative 4 seconds, negative 3 seconds, and so on. Astronauts also have to use another concept in math and algebra that we've already touched on. Exponents. The little raised numbers that tell us how many times a number is multiplied by itself. If the number 4, for example, is only multiplied by itself once, it's the first power of 4. If it's multiplied by itself twice, we call it a second power of 4. And if it's multiplied by itself three times, we call it the third power of 4, and so on. The second power of 4 is also known as 4 squared because it represents a square which is 4 times 4. And the third power of 4 is also known as 4 cubed because it represents a cube which is 4 times 4 times 4. This is a very neat system for people who have to deal with the enormous distances involved in space exploration, millions and millions of miles. Instead of writing 100, for instance, like this, we can write it as 10 squared. And 1,000 is 10 cubed. 10,000 is 10 to the power of 4 and 10 to the 4th. 100,000 is 10 to the 5th. And a million is 10 to the 6th. So a space satellite that's 1 million miles away can also be said to be 10 to the 6th miles away. This system of using exponents to represent very large numbers is called scientific notation. To translate from regular math notation into scientific notation, simply isolate the first digit in the number and count how many places there are to its right. That gives you the exponent. One million has six zeros to the right of its first digit, so it can be written as 10 to the sixth. If the number isn't a nice whole power of 10, 
like the distance from the Earth to the Sun, for example, which is 93 million miles, we isolate the 9 by putting a decimal point after it, and then counting how many digits there are to the right of the decimal point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we can express the entire number as 9.3 times 10 to the 7th. And of course, if we have to deal with truly astronomical numbers, like the number of stars in the universe, which add up to 80,000 million million million, how much easier to write 8 times 10 to the 22nd? NASA is one of our greatest national resources, and the purpose of NASA, of course, is not only to get into space, but the spin-offs that come out of our research to bring those back into your environment and uh, assist you in your livelihood and your comfort of life. Uh, the requirements to work with NASA Center would be a degree in engineering, math, or one of the other sciences. When we launch our vehicle from Florida, we are under some constraints. Uh, primarily those constraints being the fact that we will never drop anything over populated area, nor will we drop any parts into unfriendly waters. So we have a window that we can actually leave from uh, Florida, and if we launch due east, then uh, we will find that that's the northmost point in our orbit, because uh, we're going to take a, a trajectory that will carry us across the equator, and somewhere we will be 28 and a half degrees below the equator since we're, since, uh, our launch site uh, in Florida is 28 and a half degrees above the equator. Uh, in the launching process, we're going to be picking up height or altitude, so we have to keep track of that. We're going to be picking up downrange, which will be measured both as X and Y coordinate, uh, how far east, how far north. Uh, also, when we launch down there, uh, we have about four and a half million pound vehicle with about six and a half million pounds of thrust. And so you're going to pick up speed at a very rapid rate. But don't, get, don't forget the fact that the Earth is also rotating to the east and gives us quite a contribution in our eastward velocity. If you're riding the Earth at the equator itself, you're traveling about 1,000 miles an hour to the east. At Florida, you're traveling roughly 800 miles an hour to the east. If you want to figure this out accurately, we'll take the speed of the Earth and multiply by the cosine of the angle to the latitude that we have there at, at Florida, about 28 and a half degrees. So there's a lot of factors that get involved, and these become very large numbers, particularly by the time that we reach uh, orbital velocity, we're traveling approximately 17,500 miles an hour, and we're up there somewhere between 150 to 200 miles altitude. And again, as we're coming back in, the Earth's gravity is going to increase. We have to do all that calculation. Uh, the resistance of the Earth's atmosphere begins to pick up to the point that the temperature's up on the nose of the vehicle will reach about uh, 22 to 2,500 degrees. Again, there's a lot of math that goes into figuring out what thickness material you'll have to have at various points on the vehicle. So math becomes the, the uh, vehicle and the key, really, to get into orbit and to get out of orbit. The exponent tells you how many times a number is multiplied by itself. So in a sense, an exponent is a multiplier. But you can run into situations where you have to multiply the multiplier. For example, if a spaceship is traveling at 10,000 miles an hour and the captain decides to multiply his speed by 100 miles an hour, we'd write it like this. Or we could express it in scientific notation by saying that the spaceship is traveling at 10 to the fourth miles an hour and is going to increase its speed by 10 squared. So when the same calculation is done using scientific notation, you add the exponents. 4 plus 2 is 6. Therefore, 10 to the fourth multiplied by 10 squared is 10 to the sixth. Double check this. Think of 10 to the fourth as 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, and 10 squared as 10 times 10. And count the total number of tens. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, that's the first rule of exponents. When you multiply powers, you add the exponents. And we can sum up this rule in algebraic terms with the equation a to the power of m times a to the power of n equals a to the power of m plus n. But what happens when our spaceship captain decides he wants to divide his speed of 10,000 miles an hour by 100? How do we do that using exponents? How do we divide the multipliers? Well, 
Let's do it the regular way first. If we divide 10,000 by 100, what we in fact do is subtract two zeros from 10,000 to give us 100. So when the same calculation is written in scientific notation, we subtract the exponents. 4 minus 2 equals 2. Therefore, 10 to the 4th divided by 10 squared is 10 squared. Again, we can check that we have this right if we think of 10 to the 4th as 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, and subtract two tens from four tens to give us the two in 10 squared. So now we have the second rule of exponents. When you divide powers, you subtract exponents. And the algebraic equation, which sums this up, is a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n equals a to the power of m minus n. Armed with these rules of exponents, let's see how Moriarty miscalculated the distance for his deadly missile. Well, I, I am staying tuned, Holmes, but all I can see is Moriarty's intergalactic guided mutilator getting farther and farther away from us. But I still don't see how putting uh, two and four together explains why Moriarty overshot the mark so badly. Think about it, Watson. I refuse to give you any help this time. You'll simply have to work it out for yourself. <laughs> Very well. Let me see. The, the distance between Moriarty's spaceship and our spaceship is 17,000 miles multiplied by 10 squared. 10 squared is 100, so hmm, that means we multiply 17,000 by 100 which is 1,700,000 miles. Now, how could Moriarty have got that calculation wrong? Watson, you're being unscientific about this. Un unscientific? Uh, were you giving me a clue, Holmes? Yes, Watson, and I hope you take note of it. Uh, no. Uh, notation, aha! You're talking about scientific notation, exponents and all that. You're getting warmer, Watson. So 17,000 multiplied by 100 in scientific notation is 1.7 times 10 to the fourth multiplied by 10 squared. And to do that calculation, we need to follow the first rule of exponents. When you multiply powers, you add exponents. Ah, I see. We put 2 and 4 together to give us 6. But that comes to the same thing. 1.7 times 10 to the 6 equals uh, 1,700,000. Uh, Moriarty could have done that too. Only if he understood the rules of exponents, which I happen to know he does not. Moriarty never does his homework. So instead of adding the exponents, Moriarty uh, must have multiplied them to get 1.7 times 10 to the 8th. Uh, which equals not 1,700,000, but 170 million. Now, look at the screen again, and you'll see that that's exactly how far the MIGDM will reach. Mm, don't say it. Don't say it. It's all too obvious. When it comes to brain power, I'm light years ahead of Moriarty. <laughs> We've nothing more to fear from MIGDMs. Uh, there may be no more M-I-G-G-M's, but what about Moriarty's L-G-M's? What are you overdoing all those initials, Watson? What on earth is an L-G-M? Uh, nothing on earth, Holmes, but something horrible in space. L-G-M stands for Little Green Men. My word! Uh, uh, Watson, abandon ship! Uh, uh, uh.